Joined by Frodan. Whoa! Uh, it was for a second I thought uh, we became Cora and Sottle. I know, I was looking I mean, out. You, you got the dress part down for Sottle, and I think I did my best to dress kind of like Cora today. Mm -hmm. Pink outfit and everything. <laughs> yeah, you like a. She didn't get the memo. She was supposed to wear a pink blazer as well. We said we'd be twinsies, and you guys agreed to do it. Although I guess Firebat also got the memo as well. Don't know why you guys dress up all purple. Purple's a, a weird color to have. Yeah, I really like camera. the uh, the inside out watermelon look. It, uh, it's, it's not a watermelon, dude. Suits you, you quite said well. It, you said it. You said it. He's like, throw it in. You're wearing watermelon colors. I'm like, this is not green. Watermelon's supposed to be green and pink. Okay, throw it in. Yeah. And I know you're going to talk about your color buying this, but Kibler's not here, so no one's going to cry a river for you. I know. The Kib series, uh, let's just get straight into the matches, uh, TJ. The series is Nobler versus BB Gun Gun. We have uh, an excellent match for you guys. I think a uh, big story that's coming out for me in the semifinals is that three out of the four of this practice group is through to the semifinals, and only three could because Frozen had to play against Silent Storm. Mm -hmm. Um, but even more to that point, Frozen's also very much more on the NA side of things, the English-speaking side. Uh, these are the guys, BB Gun Gun, Sans Storm, New Ability. They're the ones who are also, you know, primarily speaking a lot of Chinese and English, too, within their practice group. And I don't think it's a surprise. I've known that these guys have been very good for a long time, and it's time for the audience to realize it as well. Yeah, these guys are putting on a clinic here at the Last Call Invitational for America's Three out of the three that have made it to the stage made it through to the semifinals. And, Dan, we watched Silent Storm sort of become a man at the Legendary Series Season 1 finals, if we could think back. Silent Storm's breakout performance made it all the way through the open bracket, and he was innovating. He was super good back then, and he's been quiet since then, but I'm really looking forward for, for him to break out. But talking about uh, BB Gun Gun and Knob Lord, Knob Lord is... Another player similar to BB Gun Gun that has these practice groups that people credit him all the time for. Uh, these players that have made it really far in other tournaments or won other tournaments. One of the, the first names out of their mouth is Knob Lord, or one of the first names out of their mouth is BB Gun Gun. Mm -hmm. So this m matchup has some significance for a lot of players who were on the other side of that. They were on the stage while Knob Lord was looking at them. Now it's Nalbord on the stage while they're looking at, at them, or BB Gun Gun in that case as well. So uh, really interesting stories for both these players coming in. And Shaman was left up. So BB Gun Gun's going to throw that out right away. Yeah, a little interesting choice there is Nalbord allowing the Shaman to go up uh, compared to Nostam, of course, uh, where, you know, it, it was really interesting watching, um, you know, BB Gun Gun go up against Nostam and, you know, BB Gun was not banning that aggressive Shaman because he realized how weak of a deck it felt like compared to the Drew, which is much scarier. However, you know, now that we've seen the mid-range Shaman in full capacity just in the previous series where Chess Dude was just not able to handle the Shaman threat, you have to kind of wonder, what's the real plan here? When you let your opponent play the mid-range Shaman, you're playing with fire yeah. or, or, or blue lightning. Especially with, you know, this lineup from Knob Lord. Zoo does not. Zoo has traditionally been pretty good against shamans, just because they're the ones that can contest that early board power the best. You know that they have decent ways to deal with totem golem. They can trade up into uh, tuskar totemic. Usually they can take the board early and run away with it. But shamans have gone towards a strategy where they can deal with just about everything. Their early game tools have gotten so good. Spirit Claws, Maelstrom Portal, Lightning Storm, all these things tend to make Zoo's life miserable because they can't overextend on the board, but Zoo is not really a class that can hold back. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. It's the fact that uh, Zoo is just so bad at bouncing back when Shaman gets those AoE cards. Knob Lord immediately picking that Soul Fire, realizing how well it synergizes with his hand. Of course, the Soul Fire and Silverware Golem is one of the the more swingy things that can happen early on. BB Gun Gun not being able to pick up any early game plays, but he always can have that chance of spell power totem coming out of the, the hero power this turn. Mm -hmm. he, he can guarantee deal with it with Maelstrom Portal. That's but true. That card has so much value in this matchup. You know, it, it tends to not be as good as it once may have been because Zoo has tended to go, go away from using one health minions. They still have some left in the deck. Abusive Sergeant you can see in the hand, but no Forbidden Ritual. 
Uh, yeah. Less 1-1 one, one tokens overall. So maybe has less value. Maybe B BB Gun Gun feels like he has to use it here. But, I mean, there's two totems that are good in this situation. Searing totem is also pretty good. So whether he gets that or the spell power totem, he's going to be a good spot. But he gets healing totem, which is probably the worst. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not the best in this scenario, but it's never really that bad of a position if um, you can't kill it because you do have Maelstrom Portal. Even if you don't kill it off this turn, your opponent's going to develop things around 2 to 3 health, and then if you get a Spell Power Totem in the next couple turns, you can just Maelstrom Portal off of it and then mm. clean up with your Spirit Claws. That's very true. But, I mean, it's a really good point that you, that you put out there. We were talking about how there's not a lot of Forbidden Rituals anymore. Um... The, instead, they're putting in Malchazar's Imps. And the large reason why is has to do with the fact that Maelstrom Portal is just so strong against that. You've Forbidden Ritual, and then you, Mal uh, you Maelstrom Portal, and you get a lot of free tempo. Yeah, uh, a lot of people probably think that it's strictly because of the fact that Zoo has received more discard synergy. But it's also just the way the meta has gone. One drops are very important. Having so one drops that survive... In those situations with Maelstrom Portal, I mean, Shaman's so popular right now. If you have a, a plan that uh, doesn't revolve around banning Shaman, then you sort of need that resiliency. And you can see how much Noblord respects the totems in this matchup, putting four damage into a healing totem. Not only can that totem trade up with Flame Tongue, that totem also means BB Gun Gun's more likely to draw into a uh, Spell Power totem. Or if BB Gun Gun were to Lightning Storm, he'd have sort of a free minion on the board going to the next turn so that he could then use to his advantage. So those totems have a lot of implications more so than just, you know, heal your minions for one at the end of your turn as the healing totem states. This is a little bit of a tricky situation for BB Gun Gun. I wouldn't mind him just hero powering and playing a little greedy. I mean, if your opponent ha plays a very strong three mana play, such as Imp Gang Boss or Dark Shark Councilman, you can hex it and play even greedier for the following turns. Um, it does increase your chances of being able to uh, get the spell power totem over time and pick an optimal scenario of killing it. He does choose to play the mana tide totem. I think he also feels like his hand's a little bit too weak. This was also okay, but at the same time, um, you know, his hand's not improving that much. Flame Tongue Totem doesn't help him that much. Either. Yeah. And being as greedy as possible, I think. You talked about being greedy for these turns, but being greedy as possible in this matchup overall can a lot of times gain you uh, a net positive. You have so many tools in the later stages of the game that can allow you to uh, make big swing turns. Uh, I'm talking about things from below. Even that about Valiant are cards that can allow you to sort of turn nothing into something. So let's say later on in the game, you're at turn seven, turn eight, a turn where you can Maelstrom Portal or Lightning Storm and drop one of those things. You can uh, really make big swing turns and sort of makes it hard for the zoo to overextend onto the board because they always know that their board is really never out of reach of things that Shaman can do with their board sweeps. Once again, introduced at a pretty awkward juncture because if he chooses to go for the hex play, you know, it's it's a little bit off curve. You're not using your mana efficiently, but I still don't mind it. I mean, we were talking about it before. There's no real rush with the zoo deck. Uh, yes, they do have some burst in the hand, but you have some really sweet stuff with a Maelstrom portal, and now that you picked up the Azure Drake, you also have a guarantee of spell power also. So if say your opponent has a weak turn, he life taps, chooses to play a couple of weaker minions, you also still don't have to play Maelstrom portal. You can just use the last charge of the weapon. You're at 29, and that's relatively high health for this late into the game. Yeah, he's... Oh, God. That's bad. Oh, no. Well, actually, shoot is that, is that my arena draft leaking into Nob Lord's <laughs> Discover? Well, to be honest, Shield Baron might be able to get a lot of value here. I uh, could protect some some powerful minions, Knife Juggler included in those. Even Balcazar Zimp could could need protecting in the future. He he can gain a lot of value over the course of the game. It's also just there for discard fodder. Yeah, it's also a possibility as well. Beaver Gun would love to guarantee a spell power minion off of the just low cost they could real, mail, roll the maelstrom portal and see what he's able to get but unfortunately he's introduced with yet again another really awkward scenario of do i just play a little bit greedier do i play azure drake instead of playing the portal and without the guarantee of being able to get 
dispel power, then he just has to play this defensive. I don't really disagree with this, although it does set him up to get... Oh! No, what? There it is! Just, okay. That, that's pretty good, I, th I, th I think. Yeah, I, I was thinking that he was going to play uh, Dark Trial Librarian in All right. Soulfire, but it ends up Soulfiring first. Makes a lot of sense because he wants to get rid of that. Well, he's got two decent, he's got one decent outcome, one amazing outcome, and one terrible outcome if he decides to play Darkshire Librarian this turn. Yeah. The amazing outcome being Civil War Golem, the okay outcome being Possessed Villager because it's not that bad of a discard. And of course, terrible being the Doom Guard. He's seen a hex already, so. That Doom Guard is probably an integral part of his game plan. See so what he goes with. Oh, the Silverware Golem! Yeah, that was huge. That was massive. Also gets another juggle as well. So win, win, and win. Yeah, we'll lose for BB Gun Gun, so it's not uh, smiles all around. However, with a Lightning Bolt draw, that means, I believe, a Spell Partona would just be the full clear. It's going to be tough. He gets oh, it! Oh, my man. goodness! Oh, hey, well, to be fair, Knoblord hit a 1-3, and, and now uh, BB Gun Gun hit a 1-4, so it's not exactly the same percentages, but you can see that BB Gun Gun's been playing very judiciously with his AoE because he knows that that's one of the key cards to this matchup. Mm. He's thinking, uh, you know, best way to sequence this. He's thinking, what is his play going to be after Maelstrom Portal? Uh, yeah. I don't think there's anything that punishes him for, like, say, playing Totem Golem first. Yeah, Totem Golem might be better to play on the follow-up. Mm -hmm. Or maybe he wants to evaluate first. Yeah. Maybe he wants to deal with that uh, Civil War Golem right away instead. And so might want to Lightning Bolt this down. But if he Lightning Bolts it, that means he's overloaded going to the next turn. So he right. wouldn't be able to Thunderbolt Valiant uh, plus Totem up to get the effect. I, I guess he can't anyway with Totem Golem either, but... Uh, wants a minion to be able to contest this board. It is important to play the Mail Report first because you do have a chance of getting the Tunnel Trog. It's a very small corner case mm. outcome, but for Shaman, it's actually not uh, the the most uncommon thing you'll ever see. It feels like my opponents get that very often in an ironic way. Like Mail mm. Portal plays Tunnel Trog and then just plays, I don't know, Flavory Faces or something. Yeah. But, I mean, Nabot still has ways to deal with this stuff. It's yeah. just now it's. The Shaman's cards are overall going to be much higher value than the Zoo Warlocks. So once you get to a situation where you lose handle of the board, it's really tough to sort of come back. Knife Juggler, not the worst. He would have much preferred to have one of these one drops go, so he could still play Knife Juggler plus a one drop to try and ping off this uh, this abusive sergeant. But it's definitely not the worst case scenario. He's oh, riding into a new Whoa, man. hello. That is brutal. Fire Elemental uh, fits the mana perfectly. I think I was originally looking at the Thunder Bluff plus the Lightning Bolt just to get the max power on board. Mm -hmm. Knoblord also introduced with so many awkward junctures where like he had to keep choosing to life tap instead of play the Doom Guard, and it's getting increasingly weaker because his opponent picks up more responses. But that does end up being very convenient here. The Direwolf Alpha fits the mana bill perfectly, and he is putting a significant amount of pressure onto the board. Assuming he attacks instead of trade. Yeah, there's there's a couple things that punishes him for attacking, and there's a couple things that punish him for trading. So this is a tough decision. He's seen a hex, so he knows that's not there. But Flame Totem could allow it to trade up. But in that case, he'd just be netting six damage uh, and still killing the Fire Elemental. Mm -hmm. um, if he trades, then he gets punished by Maelstrom Portal. He gets punished by Lightning Bolt, things like that. So I'm leaning towards damage. But the thing is, is he's already been through damage in his deck, so maybe he doesn't. He's unsure if he'll be able to push the extra mile. Yeah. But I, I like the damage push because I feel like there's more things in BB Gun Gun's deck that would punish him for, uh, for trading, mm -hmm. than there would be for uh, not trading in this scenario. Given the fact that he's seen a hex. Yeah, I really like what you said. I think there's a bigger question outside of, well, what can I get punished by? It's more like, how do I win if I? trade and my opponent responds perfectly mm -hmm. yeah i'd be my opponent's at 14 he has five cards in the hand i'd be life tapping and playing one ones to one threes you know that kind of level of power i think if i rush my opponent i have a higher chance to win if i draw my second doom card even though i use both of my soul fires and bb gun gun of course he is just gonna uh, play a little bit slow build up his board and eventually just overwhelm it through snowball potential mm -hmm. um, Silverware Golem is great, but if you picked up Doomguard here, it'd be great as well. Yeah. One thing I want to point out on that last turn is 
the fact that BB Gun Gun decided to hex and then kill the hex immediately, he realizes that one of the things that could give him trouble that would be worse than you know him missing six damage to the face would be Defender of Argus having two targets on the board uh, guaranteed. Uh, so he decided to make sure that he played sort of the safest possible, play around as much damage as possible, and go with the miss six damage to the face but trade off the frog. So a little bit of an interesting move there that a lot of not a, a lot of players wouldn't make. But I, I, I sort of agree with it. Noblord already throws out the well played. He realizes that he's in quite a bit of trouble here. Yeah, but what a reversal of roles, too, as the metagame develops. I think if people who've been watching Hearthstone over the years, they have a certain paradigm of how the matchups end up going. One of the examples is Freeze Mage against Warrior, Control Warrior. People always accepted that Freeze Mage was the underdog. However, in matchups like Zoo and Midrange Shaman, that's been flip-flopping a lot. Before, it was very much Zoo favored against the Shaman just because of how slow they were. They only had access to Lightning Storms, and even then, it overloaded them. Zoo would just refill. Novel is going to concede here after life tapping and seeing that he has no more options. But I think we've expected this outcome. Shaman is just very dominant. I think. The fact that Nava left it open is uh, still something that can be debated by a lot of players because so many people are deciding to ban it, DJ. Yeah, you sort of sometimes you have to concede that matchup in order to make your lineup better across the board. So, uh, you know, good recognition by BB Gun Gun, noto noting his strategy and taking a win with that quickly first. Sure. So, uh, we're going to see uh, how the series is going to unfold right after this. Welcome back, guys. My name's CJ, joined by my good pal Frodan. What's up? And we're about to jump into game number two, BB Gun Gun versus Knoblord. And during the break, we were talking about sort of uh, bans and uh, their strategy behind it and not banning Shaman. It's really interesting how some players come up with yeah. uh, their bans. Warlock banned away from, uh, from BB Gun Gun, which is not something you usually see, especially since a lot of players think that Zoo Warlock is one of the weaker decks in long series conquest right now. Yeah, it tends to be underrepresented, the Warlock class, which is very weird. We, ha we have had very few metas. I feel like I can count them on one finger uh, amount of metas that we've had prior to Karazhan, where Warlock was not a very strong class overall. And that's largely due to the fact of how strong Life Tap is as a hero power for Warlock. You have access to draw cards at the expense of health, extremely potent mechanic. This is a metagame, though, where Warlock is rather weak. You know, it's not necessarily the strongest deck because Zoo just lost a lot of its best matchups against Shaman, for example. And the Zoo has to innovate a lot with some of these weird decisions, which doesn't exactly make it the most consistent. Now, because our Zimp is a great early game play, uh, but one deck it is that is historically good against has always been Druid um, because of the amount of pressure you can put on early early against the Druid. However, when the Druid starts off with something like this, where they have Innervate with a four mana play and then follow up with two mana plays, it gets very hard to win from there too. Very difficult. Noblord, Warlock is going to be one of the weak links for sure in his lineup. If you look at it across the board, he's got like three weak matchups and one pretty good matchup. Um, considering BB Gun Gun has uh, the... Freeze Mage, I believe? Or am I looking at the wrong No, no, no. BB Gun has the, the Tempo Mage, but it's a little bit weird because it has like one Cabal's Tome and one Flame Strike. Ah, yeah, yeah. Barnes. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a, it's extremely burn heavy, so it's it feels like half Freeze Mage, half Tempo Mage, because it transitions from the early game Mana Worms to killing my opponent. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be tough for him. That's definitely going to be the weak matchup and we'll see if he can get it done. He's probably going to have to target that Tempo Mage and find a win there, because that's one of the decks that uh, can do well against. Whoa! BB Gun Gun's extremely afraid of Soulfire, essentially. Um, he's, he's feeling like if he plays the Violet Teacher and his opponent has a Soulfire, he loses. But that's, that's really weird to me, because if your opponent does have Soulfire, then he's giving up his minion too. Or I guess another another weird scenario is like double abusive sergeant, but yeah. Well, even then, your opponent's still giving up a lot in order to do that. One thing to note also is Nobler three kept as oh, Zoo. Oh yeah. But I don't even know if that indicates Soulfire because usually against Druid, you'll you want to three keep a curve. You want sort of like one two three. And that's what he kept. He kept uh, one-drop Imp, two-drop Peddler, three-drop Imp Gang Boss, 
because the minions are what sort of fuels the engine against Druid. So Baby Gun Gun might have been afraid of sort of that perfect scenario where he saw a three keep and he, he thought to himself, well, if he played Malchazar Imp turn one and kept Malchazar's Imp, then he must have some sort of discard mechanic to punish me for it. Yeah. And the big one is Soulfire. I still think it's a little bit too safe, and I still think that I don't think that that would be a keep. But, you know, Bibi Gunkin might have seen something or know something about Nomblord uh, that we don't necessarily know. So, um, wild growth in the hand for BB Gun Gun, but does he need to be a little bit more proactive? I think Wild Growth is just as good as Blood Mage Thanos in this situation, if not better because you get the Mana Crystal. Yeah, the extra Mana Crystal will be huge, especially because BB Gun Gun can now play the Azure Drake on five and then Thanos swipe on six mana. And that's huge considering how much the Bio Teachers already dictated a lot of presence away from the board. But Noblord has the second Malchazar Zimp up, uh, so it doesn't look like BB Gun Gun's gonna kill that imp. And if you play the Doom Guard, you're gonna just be able to cycle two of those cards very powerfully. Although you are giving up Defender of Argus, and Nobler can also draw really awkwardly if he picks up the Soul Fire or the Doom Guard in his next turn immediately, and then he loses that card in this card, which would be unfortunate. Yes, it would be. I think the next draw is gonna be really big for Noblord. Because the, of the fact that, you know, if he draws that discard mechanic or if he draws, right. like, another powerful card in his deck, he may not want to cycle it out, but may have to because of the way his hands panned out. Yeah, precisely. I think you need to put as much pressure on Druid mm -hmm. as possible. Now, BB Gun Gun's like, is, you know, kind of taxing himself over this attack with the 1-1 <laughs> minion of whether or not he wants to trade it in or how he trades it in. If he goes into the Imp, does it telegraph too much? Does he go to the face because he's not really afraid of what happens? Uh, I think that if you attack into the, the Malchazar Zip, it's the most logical setup for how Thanos Swipe is, but it's also extremely obvious to your opponent. So then it might force him to play around stuff. And, and the way you devastate Zoo is you have them overextend into the board. Mm -hmm. Speaking of extending onto the board, that is a Doom Guard on five with two draws. Pretty big deal. And uh, picking up a couple of decent cards, not, a, not the worst, and that distribution of health so annoying to deal with you don't even take too much power off the board with blood mage plus swipe yeah uh, because of the fact that you're giving an extra one one token uh to the from the imp gang boss i mean you are dealing with the doom guard but then you might as well just blood mage plus wrath to deal with it instead and hey. keep swipe for a better situation he he could also just uh, i don't know i was gonna say he can nourish but yeah, or Swipe Wrath. Yeah, Swipe Wrath, I think, also might be pretty reasonable if you just Wrath Imp Gang Boss and Swipe it. Mm -hmm. Might be your best chance to stabilize onto it. I think one of the ways that you can lose this matchup by taking it a little bit too slow against the Zoo Warlock, if you Nourish, for example, you're, mm -hmm. you're almost asking to get punished. And the Thanos Swipe doesn't really lead to anything. I guess there is a uh, room for the Thanos and then to Wrath to draw a card and remove something onto the board as well. It's also a possibility. Oh, he's choosing to nourish here for crystals. Whoa. Okay. okay. Well, that's interesting. He still gets to take off the Doom Guard uh, from the board, which is you know the same amount of power. Next turn, he's got a few options. Okay. Uh, Do you have any opinions on that, TJ? I don't know. It, it, it means that he's relying heavily on his next few draws, because what he has in his hand right now is not necessarily enough to get it done. A soul fire picked up. That's one of the best pickups yeah. off the top. Yeah. So now BB Gun Gun has to draw. I don't even know what's going to get it done for him at this stage. Yeah, I mean, I do like the idea of being able to ramp up as Druids. That way, cards like Ragnaros have more relevance. But without guarantee plays on the following turn outside of the Thanos swipe hero power, I think what BB Gun Gun was anticipating was he's going to use that next turn to commandly swing the board, mm -hmm. preserve his health as best as he can, and then go for Ragnaros on the following turn. That pickup could be huge if it picks up the Starfall. It could be. That'd be massive. <laughs> uh, wait. Uh, Thanos swipe hero power. Oh, you can't uh, squeeze in Savagery. Because <laughs> if, you, if you have Savagery, you gain spell power from, from the Thanos. So you can turn your hero power into 
or savagery until one like an arcane blast effectively sort of. it, yeah. two, it would deal two damage with the hero power still would be pretty underwhelming i mean those choices in general are very underwhelming i mean at this stage since he hero powered yeah he's gonna do it first that way he can uh fill the board and then and make sweat. sure that not an extra minion gets generated this is Proper sequencing from BB Gun Gun. This is what he was planning with the Nourish Swipe. Oh, sorry, the Nourish play last turn so that he can play the Thanos and swipe this turn. Very astute observation. And I mean, this was a pretty commanding swing on the board. Is it enough, though? I mean, it's a very uh, hard position from Nabo to usually bounce back from, but he gets two draws and then a third from Life Tab. He might be able to get a decent rag on the board next turn. Rag is very tough to play in this matchup because a lot of times there's so many small minions on the board, it's hard to guarantee that you get a good minion, but he's going to have probably, you know, four minions on the board next turn, one of which Ooh. you can remove with a hero power. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, this is a pretty nasty draw, Defender of Argus, so that way you didn't have to give up uh, any minions to the Thanos. I definitely like Soul Fire in the face here. I think it's a waste of damage if you uh, <laughs> Soul Fire the Thanos. That's yeah, definitely the better card to discard. And Oblord's still putting on the pressure. And Agnaros has a lot to do here. Oh, the Innervate might be really useful. Okay, so Ragnaros certainly will come down. You can hero power down Malkazar Zimp. I don't think the uh, Innervate was actually as useful as I thought it would be because no. you've lost the spell power from the Thanos. I thought you could use it for Savagery. Yeah, there's... It's going to be hard to find value to that as the game progresses. You know, if he picks up Ancient of War or something above six mana next turn, which I think would be only Ancient of War or Yogg-Saron, then he could utilize the Innervate to get out the Mire Keeper also. But just a waste this turn. The Savage is not going to do anything. Hmm. But Rag on a board with two targets against Zoo is about as good as it's going to get. Yeah, I, I think that as long as it removes a minion, you're still okay. It, your opponent's already used his Soul Fire and Doom Guard, um, and you know you're a little bit afraid of what he can do. But your 15 is still a comfortable enough amount of health. Um, I think he's also mo like thinking over if he uses Mire Keeper now, if he innervates it out, he has the most reasonable chance to fight back onto the board this turn or next turn. But the problem is then he misses out on killing out this two one. So. And if, of course, in the terrible scenario that he would lose everything in Dragonbo's face. And it uh, does. Maybe it's actually better to innervate out the Mire Keeper there. Because you, you increase the chance that you actually kill a minion with Rag. Mm -hmm. So you, you'll be in the same, almost uh, just a little bit below the same spot that you'd be in on the board anyway, on average. But you'd have an extra 3-3 three, three, and a 2-2 two, two going into your next turn to better contest the board to make sure that your rag in the following turn has a better chance. So let's say he had innovated out the Mire Keeper that turn and rag, instead of going face, had hit the 2-1, which, you know, it, 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 which would be probably the worst minion on the board to hit. Oh, oh. Raven Idol for a chance on picking up a huge swingy card. Mark of Nature Whoa. is interesting. That's... You can attach to rag. Sure. And if Rag is able to even somehow direct his wrath and fury onto the Darkshire Councilman, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe this game is not over yet. And then Savagery allows you to be able to take down the 4-1 taunt uh, pretty efficiently without taking too much damage. I mean, who knows? Still not getting that Mire Keeper down, though, if he does that. Yeah, um, that's quite unfortunate. But it is what it is. I think you're, at least you're still alive. At and TJ, as long alive. as you live to see another day, it's never truly over in a game like Hearthstone. I definitely would like to see Savagery being used here. So there's two, five, eight, ten damage on the board, and Ragnaros can eliminate three or more. Okay. No, that is it's actually the weakest minion. Take down. Yeah. Oh. Does this change anything? Well, it allows him to bring this Darkshire Councilman up to quite a yeah. bit. Flip uh, the rag is also more damage. Oh, uh, yeah. Flipping the rag is better on average. Or better overall, I mean. Uh, because flipping the Darkshire Councilman would buff it to six. Because you'd flip the health and then it would buff oh, immediately. Man. So it would be six. But you are giving up a lot of damage. I mean, you have to kill this rag for sure. Yeah. But then you're also dealing yourself down to eight. 
Uh, so, in the event that Yaxron gets picked up, uh, I mean, some crazy things could happen. This one's quite the nail buyer, despite the fact that Nobbler seemed to be in control from the beginning. Uh, Dude, trade an Imking boss or Defender of Argus here? I personally think that uh, you want to get as much damage out as possible. All right, then Imking boss it is. Yeah. So that way you get the extra 1-1. One, one. And you get an, one extra damage to the face. All right, well, BB Gunga needs something big. No. Archangel's big, but it's not enough. It's not going to do enough here. He needed it to have taunt of some kind. And while Arcane Giant being free is awesome, there's just too much momentum on Nobler's side. And this is why Zoo has given Druid trouble. Awesome. Usually by the time Druid stabilizes, it's too late. Still close, though. You can see Noblord with a sigh of relief after that game was over. Because you always know that Druid has a lot of things at their disposal. Ancient of War, a Yogg-Saron at the end there. Even a swipe might have been enough to at least stabilize or, yep. or attempt to stabilize for BB Gun Gun. So... Uh, picking up a win with a deck that we said might be a little bit of a weak spot for Noblord in that matchup has got to be a big relief. Tied up one-to-one -one now. Yeah, even that Crazed Alchemist tech you started seeing coming to use there. A lot of times people are looking at Crazed Alchemist thinking mm. it's a very unusual card. And it is for many reasons, but one of the reasons why you can use it is for the big value trades, such as flipping your opponent's high health and lower attack minion there, essentially dealing for damage when you need to trade past into it. So Noblord, his tech is paying off, and it seems like he's not affected even though the first game didn't go his way. Yeah, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the locations that these players are playing from on your screen. There is the Fireside Gathering at Toronto, Canada, where uh, players such as, I believe, BB Gun Gun, Soundstorm, and Neobility are the three players playing there. They're all in the semifinal, so those guys have to be happy. Uh, Santa Ana, even though some of the players that are competing at that location haven't had as much success, those guys still look like they're having uh, a ton of fun. Uh, a pretty busy environment there for early on in the afternoon. So uh, pretty cool places. Make sure you guys check out some Fireside Gatherings if you have some near you. We had five players show up to the Santa Ana location. We've had three show up to Canada, and all three players from Canada went through. So uh, it's, it's not looking good for people in America, at least. Looks like Canada is getting the best of us this time. Just yeah. like last year, Ch Canada was also the champion when Purple was able to be crowned. Hot Form, of course, went the farthest out of any North American player last year at BlizzCon, getting second to mm -hmm. Oskaka. So, you know, Canada keeps getting forgotten as one of the powerhouse countries that produces some of these great minds. And it wouldn't surprise me again if another player, maybe maybe not necessarily from Canada, BB Gun Gun technically is, you know, US a flag representing, but playing from the Canada region, mm. nah, it's not it's not a surprise to see them do well. Yeah, they have Sidonia, who's a representative at the World mm -hmm. Championship already, and not only he's from Canada, he's from uh, Quebec, which is you know uh, uh, even as more Canadian, diverse as Canadian as it gets. As Canadian as it gets, <laughs> that's right, that's right. Uh, so uh, definitely cool to see all the support for those guys. BB Gun Gun, like you mentioned. A fake Canadian for for the sake of this week, sort for the sake of, of today. honorable Canadian. There you go. You know, we don't really like to call him fake Canadian <laughs> fake or anything. <laughs> But, uh, you know, he does identify a lot with the Canadian players mm. who uh, do have a lot of um, ties to the Chinese-American uh, scene as well. So you look at BB Gun Gun, and once again, I I'm, I'm predicting a BB Gun Gun uh, Neobility finals from the beginning. I was saying that I wanted both these guys to win. I couldn't really pick one or the other. I picked Neobility because I felt statistically and historically he was the one that had more history to him but bb gun gun uh, is also a player that can threaten for the, the last spot here in the, in the last call qualifier yeah, knob lord is the only remaining player left from the santa Ana location not that uh, we're talking about it not that they have any sort of implication mm -hmm. it's not like everybody that's at santa Ana gets some sort of bonus for the player at their location winning uh it's just for you know yeah. the sake of fun and they're all in on knob lord yeah, they're they're all in on Nobler at yeah. the moment. Even the players there are probably saying, "Come on, man." Yeah, that's right. I mean, if don't you guys, make us look cursed. Yeah, I, I mean, Muzzy, Frozen, Nostam, all of them kind of flew down to the Santa Ana location, hoping that they had a chance to go through this eight-man gauntlet. But only one person remains: is Noblord. Uh and he is tied at one-one. We do have three decks remaining each from both these players here. Uh, feeling like that Noblord does have a pretty decent chance, though. But again, the the Warlock ban is something that's a little bit peculiar. I, I can totally feel like that he's feeling that he's unfavored mm -hmm. against the, the Zoo Warlock against a few of his matches. But at the same time, things like Shaman are going to grab a win anyways, too. It's, it's 
sort of a situation where do you really think your lineup is less favored across the board against Zoo than it is against Shaman? I can't imagine that's the case, but, you know, we're not the players, people putting in all the work to try and come up with the optimal strategy. We're not the players experimenting and, you know, getting the statistics in the spreadsheets like we know Knobloor does. He's a guy that puts in so much work, so... Uh, he's got to have a reason behind it. But looking at the remaining matchups, we have sort of that Tempo Mage mirror, even though the decks differ quite a bit. We have a Druid mirror, even though, again, the decks differ quite a bit. Knobboard running that sort of... I, I don't, I don't, don't want to call it greedy, because it's a very similar to a lot of the lists. It's just a little bit more ramp-heavy, and runs a Deathwing. And then we have... Yeah, Deathwing is pretty interesting. Yeah, the odd man out is Hunter versus Shaman, which have actually been the two most popular decks in rank play recently. Both of them having a lot of success. Of course, though, Shaman having quite a bit more across the last few months than Hunter has. Yeah, the, the Hunter deck is really interesting to me because the way it's built out to be very aggressive, so it harkens back to the aggro Hunter days of yore. However, it's not necessarily just completely ag aggro-driven. It also has a ton of secrets in that really mess with your opponent. You have the quick, sh uh, sorry, the explosive traps, the cat tricks, the freezing traps, the snake traps, and you have the cloaked huntress to all squeeze them in for tempo if you want. And the big thing is that you don't even necessarily need these secrets with the bow to all activate in order to get their power or go off. You can also just have one or two played and it'd still be super impactful as long as you keep squeezing the damage. And of course you have Leroy kill command. These other things that allow you to go for huge damage and end the game. Yeah. So just to keep you guys updated, the players are just thinking through uh, the decks that they want to throw out yeah, next. We need so. to get them a chess clock, man. <laughs> yeah, we can't take and sit forever here. There's people waiting to watch some games. Yeah, but there's a, a lot riding on this. This is guarantees them a spot in the finals if they win this. And both of these players probably think that this is one of their hardest matchups, especially if you look on paper, because these guys have sort of the closest lineups to each other, I'd have to say. So if you can beat the player where it's hard to tell whether or not you're statistically favored against, yep. then it's going to give you an easier road in the finals when you might be able to face a player who you do have a more refined and targeted strategy against. So uh, players have decided on their decks. So we're going to move into game number three. Knob Lord with his own Shaman now. And BB Gun Gun is going to once again throw out the Druid. Hmm, I wonder what I should cue next. Maybe Shaman! Feels like a good idea, Noblor. Can't blame you on that one. Look, turn one Fandral into Raven Idol is a very strong opening. Uh, if you want to take the board seasonally against the, the Shaman, there's not really a way they can punish you on turn two, if at, at all. Uh, although, I guess when you do have a lot of time on your turn, you can think it through. You do have Mire Keeper, or even just straight up Raven Idol, if you so desire. Noblord, you can see his face agonizing, probably thinking about all of the things that BB Gun Gun could innervate out on turn <laughs> one and how much they would hurt if if they yeah. did. Especially with a hand like that. That's not an opening hand that you want if you're a Shaman player. I, it, you know, don't count them out yet. It's, it's not as big of a deal as it might seem because Shamans do have great ways to come back on a board that they've lost in the mid game. And Druids aren't necessarily known for early pressure. They can ramp up and get things out a little bit faster than other decks can. But this is about as much pressure as you can <coughs> face because you are afraid of what's behind that Vandral. I think Nobbler is in disbelief uh, that his opponent had drew Innervate. But if it's <laughs> a lot of other players, I think they'd be stonewalled because they've just been numbed to this effect. Mm. They just know this is what Druid loves to do. It's not a surprise to anybody, really, that Druid's looking to Innervate out early against an opponent. Primarily because you can't really answer big threats like Fandral or Violet Teacher early on. Sometimes even Mire Keeper is a 3-3 challenging your early minions while your opponent ramps. It's still very scary. If I see a Druid keep a card, I just always assume that it's Innervate. <laughs> kept one card. Kept one card, it's Innervate. Uh, or Wild Growth. If you kept two cards, it's Wild Growth and Innervate. Yeah. Oh, no, Lord, he's in disbelief again. Yeah, it's like I guess he's more cards? pain that he played a card after he yeah. <laughs> came down. He didn't hero power? Yeah. Uh, Angel Lore is very interesting considering how it got nerfed. A second Raven no. Idol. No. <laughs> now, a second Raven Idol is really interesting because he does have the choice of clawing down the totem. Um, but I think the, the second Raven Idol gives him even more value. And, of course, he can pick up some better combos. Oh, that's hilarious. The fact that the Green Page was even available. Now, yeah. if Fandral lives for another turn, 
Druid of the Flame is actually a very good wow. three drop in that case. It becomes a 5-5. Five five. Three mana 5-5. Five five. Does it overload you? <laughs> no, Dan. Uh, it does not. Well, that's just broken. <laughs> Knob Lord uh, just going to play his Feral Spirits here. He's kind of stuck between a rock and a and a rage of the Firelands because he's just fire. This thing is still not going down. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't, um, he doesn't even necessarily need to play the Druid of the Flame, but I think it's best tempo he has available to him. If he plays Blood Mage plus well, the Living Roots, he's opening himself up to some AoE, I think. But he does protect his Fandral, which means that, you know, oh, you're if right. He, the if, Overload, I forgot about yeah, that. If yeah, he, if he weren't to have, he, he, there was no way he could kill this, I don't think, unless a Lightning Bolt comes off the top. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. So, I momentarily forgot about the uh, the overload, so I was assuming the Lightning Storm could clear it, but uh, you're completely right there. And once again, BB Gun Gun astutely being able to pay attention to that, and as a result, essentially punishes his opponent. And now Fandral sticks for another turn on the board, and he picks up Power of the Wild, along with the other available options here. This is actually tough, though. Because if you want to play around AoE, best play will be Druid of the Claw. Or sorry, Druid of the Flame. But Myra Keeper is, you know, so far and away the best play on the board because of its dual effect, you know, being able to build up a big board as well as ramp up. So um, Noblord will be able to punish this with Lightning Storm, should clear everything, uh, maybe except the Myra Keeper, which could be a big deal. You know, that Rolling High might be a big deal. Yeah, it, I mean, it, you can put it in punish in quotation marks. It's not really that punish big. Punish him. A, it's not really that big of a punish. I think we get a little trigger happy with that word. I mean, BB Gun Gun's well aware that his opponent has the capability of clearing it. Fandra already got a lot of value. Yeah. And the Mire Keeper surviving would have been a huge deal for BB Gun Gun, but he still already got a lot of good stuff out of his uh, Fandral and stag home. Got the taunt totem, too. So a really big punish there. <laughs> yeah. He picked up a wild growth. That's a huge punish, Dan. <laughs> You're triggering me so hard, <laughs> DJ. Uh, he's going to play the wild growth for tempo, right? <laughs> yeah, to, to really dig in the punish. Yeah. All right, well, Drew the Claw uh, coming down here most likely as the 2-5. As the 5-2 the five two gets punished too easily by things such as Flame Tongue Totem buffs or mm. a single Lightning Bolt. And... Yeah, it makes sense to load up the board as much as possible. Build up the pressure against Shaman. One of the things that Shaman's so good against Druid, even before Midrange Shaman became number one, was the fact that it tempoed out his opponent so well. Hex is so great against the Ancients of War and, and Ancient of Lore back then, that when it was commonly played. And the fact that you could use Lightning Bolt so efficiently to remove with Adder Drake and Fire Elementals. Well, one thing in our discussion that we didn't really mention in Knob Lord's decision in, on his ban was, you know, the fact that he does have an Ascetic Swamp who's teched in, which gives him incentive to leave up the Shaman. So with that tech, of course, we have to agree with his d decision to ban. Uh, but the question comes, is Ascetic Swamp Boost good enough to warrant running it in order to not have to ban Shaman uh, because of the weapons, whether it be Doomhammer and aggressive decks or Spirit Claws? Because yeah. Six Swamp is on Spirit Claws feels really nice. Punishes it super hard. Man, Ancient of Lore turning back the clock, giving people down a, a trip down memory lane as it draws only one card. This was a card that was nerfed prior to Standard coming into rotation. It used to draw two cards. It also used to restore up to eight health back uh, in the early days of Hearthstone prior to launch. That was definitely too strong, the fact that you could oh, choose yeah. two cards or restore eight health. But it was still being played, despite the fact that it was nerfed to, to five health. Yeah, the card actually is not terrible. There's just so many good druid cards right now that it's hard to, to justify fitting it in. Uh, you'd almost always rather play Ancient of War in that seven slot. Uh, there's so many good cards early on. People had trouble finding what to cut for Arcane Giants just because they realized that that card was going to be so good. So certainly, it is a great pickup from Raven Idol. Doesn't quite make the cut for you know, the ac actual constructed decks, but that is a huge swing for BB Gun Gun. Removing the board. A huge punish, you mean? Gigantic punish. I mean, Knobboard played Barnes, <laughs> and he knew exactly what would punish him for playing Barnes. Yeah. Well, I guess Knoblord can respond to this in several ways. Ragnaros seems to be the clunkiest of all options, and the optimistic scenario is nice one of the five health minions, preferably the Vile Teacher. Got it. 
Now, of course, uh, BB Gun Gun was accounting for this possibility. He has Mulch ready to go, or he can try to counter with his own Ragnaros and punish him <laughs> for that. See, now there, now that we've brought it up, <laughs> there's so many different ways that you can use that phrase. So I'm going to steer away from it. Okay. Uh, for you, Dan. Thank you. No problem. Uh, is it worth taking the risk to go for your own rag here? Because his hand is is pretty bad. He'd have to take it pretty slowly if he were to mulch this turn. But it looks like he's going. Yeah, he's going to try to cycle, cycle. card. Yeah, yeah. This, this might look confusing at first. No, you can't wow growth and gain anything on nine mana. But he ins he's realized that he's most likely going to mulch this Ragnaros. So just take the turn to develop. And he's rewarded with that by being able to play the Arcane Giant this turn. And there you go. Rewarded. <laughs> the opposite. Don't say it to you. Hex, of course, is uh, available to Knob Lord. What can he fit in beside the Hex? He can fit in a five mana play. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. Six health is really hard to Druid to deal with um, just by itself, but BB Gun Gun does have the second swipe available to him. Most likely because it's just a single target, BB Gun Gun might feel incentivized to just play Ragnaros here. Yeah, I think so. He's, he just saw the Hex. What? Wow. Second Arcane Giant. Yes, please. Oh, baby mama. And BB Gun Gun probably just going to play. He saw a Hex. Not, nothing that can really punish 288s. The thought here is whether or not he wants to play the Living Roots. He's going to go ahead and do it. And Albert's like, wait a second. You have another card that's one mana or less? What could it possibly be? It's a second Arcane Giant, and it hits oh, the Thunderbolt Valiant. You know, honestly, both situations wouldn't be that bad because Knoblord, even if he kept the Thunderbolt Valiant on board, he wouldn't be able to kill much. And then if Ragnaros hits the the health total, then he'd be able to use his swipe to just close the game out, most likely with whatever minions stuck around. So unless Knoblord picked up Hex and the Maelstrom Portal, this game was pretty much going to be lights out, but I mean, it's so unfortunate that he's not been able to have that early game curve. You saw this from his mulligans. He had Thunderbolt Valiant and Ragnaros. He had a very awkward curve for a long time. And BB Gun Gun, from the start, had Fandral Staghelm and is going to take a lead, punctuating game number three with that spell power swipe. And I think Nalbord was hoping to get a pretty quick and easy win with his Shaman in game number three. That's the deck, obviously, that a lot of players have been not necessarily targeting, but just, you know, planning to ban because of uh, its high win rate against so many decks across the, the meta. There's not really many weak matchups for Shaman at the moment, especially the mid-range Shaman. So that's a pretty big win for BB Gun Gun to actually take a victory over such a powerful deck. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the Druid can beat anything, but it's more satisfying when you beat the best deck in the game, which everyone is crowning as the mid-range Shaman. So a job well done, but we're only about halfway through the series, TJ. Yeah, so a lot more Hearthstone to play. So we'll be back right after this. Welcome back, everybody. About to jump into game number four between Knoblord and BB Gun Gun, the first semifinal matchup of the day. And that means the way that wins this is one match away from securing that final spot at the World Championship. I was hoping I was going to get it, but apparently really? you can't just be giving it to you. Well, TJ, you had a chance to play in HCT this year. You actually had the most points out of any commentator at one point. I think you still do. Uh, I guess Admirable has more points. Uh, I think Admirable does, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But you're probably number two. Well, I guess Firebats now joined the HCT crew. He's retired as well. So, you're number three now. But it's okay. Third is the one with the hairy chest. <laughs> so they've told me. I'm waiting for it to come in, though. Things about to come in. If there's anything we can agree on, that first is the worst. The second is the best. Mm. I thought it was third is the one with the treasure chest. Oh, was it treasure chest? I thought it was hairy chest. Well, I mean, both are true. Thanks, Ben Brode. <laughs> Uh, Battling Book, uh, of course, one of the cards introduced with the new One Night in Karazan Adventure. That's a random mage spell to your hand. That spell is Polymorph, which does end up blinding well with a lot of Druid cards, especially ones that are super beefy and tanky, such as the Ancients of War, Ragnaros the Fire Lord, Arcane Giants, or even Deathwing, should the situation call for it. But I imagine that's going to be played much earlier than that. 
Yeah, an interesting list here. Uh, if you remember earlier on the broadcast, I actually glanced at this list and immediately in my head, uh, the freeze mage in my brain triggered and I, I assumed it was just because I saw Loot Hoarder, Torches. Blood Mage Stalnos, Acolytes of Pain, Arcane Intellect, and Forgotten Torch, and Fireball, and I was, and Flame Strike, and I was thinking, oh, okay, that has to be Freeze. No! It's just a very cycle heavy wow. version of Tempo Mage. Oh, that's a lot bear of tone. ramp. I think by turn four, Knob Lord will be able to have Moogly Portal. By turn five, he could actually just, actually just play Death Ring. If he, I mean, it's available to him. Obviously, certainly he's going to play the rest of his hand out, but that's just how fast he's ramping to give you guys a picture. Mm -hmm. Now, Bibi Gun Gun has a lot of burst in his hand. He's got two torches and the fireball. Part of the reason why this deck list was always in and out of people's minds in tournaments was because of how powerful it is when it can get to that point of burn. But the problem is that you have to supplant your deck with a lot of card draw in order to get to it because the problem with Forgotten Torch is that it invests the Roaring Torch into your deck and you have to get it out. And you don't really have that much card draw in the first place. But you can see that BB Gun Gun has supplanted it with not just the Arcane Intellects, but also an Anacolated Pain, also Loot Hoarders. And you never know what things like Cabal's Tome can help give you extra reach. So, and of course, the Blood Mage Sound, like you mentioned. With a lot more card draw, there's a lot more explosive potential of being able to dig through your deck. So what you can anticipate the mage doing is shifting away from a board-centric game plan to eventually kill my opponent with as much burn as possible. It makes the, your early game minions much more threatening because you can protect them much more because you have more removal spells. And it also means that that damage that those early minions do actually matters a lot more considering you have more burn spells for the late game. And, and then in this type of deck, Roaring Torch is very rarely a bad draw. Uh, whether or not you're just throwing it at the face, even preemptively, mm -hmm. or using it to remo as removal to protect valuable minions, it, it's always going to be uh, pretty good in, in most matchups. Oh. Ooh, Lord of the Arena. Yeah. Not really a bad outcome at all here. Uh, Noblor can reduce this Arcane Giant to six, but not enough crystals to do so. Um, following turn. So he just ends up shift, shape shifting here just to get some extra armor count and damage from the minions. And it looks like he might be on a plan to eventually get Deathwing out, so might as well maximize his mana usage as best as he can. That Frostbolt pickup is actually really nice, so that way yeah. you can deal damage for four and use the 1-1 one -one to get past the Lord of the Arena. And he's going to push quite a bit of damage. Going to be eight damage to the face with burn spells to back it up. So, yeah. Noblord may be forced to use the Deathwing very early on in the game. And I think that's exactly what he has to do. Oh, man. But he's going to get putted. <laughs> no! By the babbling book. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Is it really that time? Not the P word. Oh, man. Here we go. Shout out you want, Deathwing, but in your mind, you're just a sheep. Oh, the Flame Waker pick up to add insult to injury. And the worst part is, there's no way to deal with the Deathwing in the deck list of BB Gun Gun. At least, what was supposed to be there. But Babbling Book, he needed precisely those two cards, CJ. He needed to play the only Babbling Book <laughs> in his deck. And he needed to hit exactly Polymorph or something equivalent to that. Polymorph 4, for example. Polymorph Boar wouldn't have removed it unless both missiles had hit it, though. So, yes, exactly Polymorph. But Noblor does pick up two good cards yeah. as, you know, sort of runner-runners beyond the Deathwing. Certainly. Uh, the Azure Drake into the Nourish. So he'll be able to reload his hand. The thing is, is, is it too late? Because BB Gun Gun is now drawing a lot of cards. He's pushing a lot of damage. And he does not have... Uh, he, he's not missing burn, is what I was trying to say. He's got yes. Fireball. He does have Roy Torches okay. in his deck as well. Yeah, this is salvageable. Mage had a relatively weak turn. He had eight mana crystals, and all he did was play a Roaring Torch and draw a card. So I think, um, or oh, sorry, Forgotten Torch. I think Knobwort still feels okay. I mean, if his opponent gasses out, but that's the whole point of the deck. You're not really gassing out. Even Gun Gun also still has a lot of other minions that can, uh, or a lot of other burn cards that can really come in through. Plus, like a Ballist Tome. So I fear Protector a little bit weak uh, on average for a draw there off the mulch. Still a minion. Still a minion. And that's not bad to pick up some of these smaller minions. It is vulnerable to a swipe, though. 
I wonder if BB Gun Gun's gonna extend onto the board or perhaps start pinging down his opponent, realizing how much burn he has. Yeah, I like loading up the board with minions. Your opponent doesn't have many cards. You've seen some removal spells already early on in the game, but a Raven Idol as well. Yeah, could be huge. Death Lord is being avenged. Death Lord. Death Wing. Death Wing. Rest in peace, Death Lord. Maybe a one. second Nourish. I, I don't I don't think this is a bad spot anymore for uh, Noblor. Picking up that Azure Drake into the Nourish was massive. He, he might consider picking up more removal. Bite does help him deal with the following threats, but there's not much minion threat. Maybe that's also what he's considering, too. Bite is heal as well as removal. And he says, if I'm removing all these minions, my opponent's just going to be on a burn plan to win the game. And eventually, Noblord is gonna, going to draw into the big stuff in his deck, the big yeah. stuff that he has left. Ancient of Boars, Ragnaros the Fire Lord. He did discard one Arcane Giant, but he has one still left in his deck. So, oh, man, good lord, there's so much damage. We're talking about the fact that you transitioned to a Freeze Mage plan. How much damage does he have right now? Without spell power, 18. With spell power, that's four extra spells, so 22. Yeah, assuming he's able to get it all out in the same turn. Uh, he can't, but he can use up most of it. And that just puts Noblor down to a really tough position. Hence why he picked the Bite, and why I actually really like that pick. Yeah. And with the ping, I mean, even Bite is, he'd have to mulch the Blood Mage down on us for, well, oh, I guess Bite right. would heal him. Okay. Because he'd, he'd be able to Bite in Hero Power, speaking up to nine. But Fireball plus ping would deal eight. But he has to, but he, if he bites and hero powers, he doesn't play anything else. He would have to mulch the Blood Mage <laughs> down to stay alive from a Fireball. We'll see if he, he realizes that that's a possibility. I mean, there's two fi or one Fireball and one Roaring Torch left in the deck, or yeah. is there no Roaring Torch left in the deck? You don't win if you don't play right. this Ancient of War, but I think Noblor yeah, knows exactly man. what BB Gunkin's holding. He has no more minions left, really. He's played his Drakes and he's played his Mana Worms. There's pretty much just burn remaining. And BB Gun Gun takes down yet another game, putting himself at match point to go to the finals. He's got one of his, I don't want to say a weaker deck, but maybe an inconsistent deck left with the Hunter, especially against a lineup like uh, BB Gun Guns. The Hunter might be a, a little bit of a tough matchup for Noblor's Druid. But, I mean, it's got to be pretty good against Temple Mage. Well, I don't know. Temple Mage probably is pretty good against too. So that, that's going to be a weak matchup, actually, I think, for BB Gun Gun. So still a yeah. chance for an outboard to come back in this one. It's, it's going to be tough. I mean, the way that this format is constructed is that it's never really over till it's over. Mm -hmm. One deck could be your weak point. The last deck that BB Gun Gun could be holding out, which is his Hunter, could also be the weak point of his lineup. Mm -hmm. A lot of players tend to give it as many chances as possible to win as opposed to cornering themselves as well. So by all means, it's not over. But last series that we saw BB Gun Gun play too, a similar situation. He was up 3-1, and it just closed it out easy peasy against Nostam. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's in a similar situation. And if a person's able to go 4-1 twice over on his side of the bracket, going to the finals. I have to feel like that his momentum is, is gaining as we speak. All right, we'll see if BB Gun can close it out. Don't go anywhere, guys, or you'll be punished. BB Gun Gun, a hunter win away from securing a spot in the finals, but he's got some uh, pretty st strong decks standing his way from Knob Lord. You mentioned earlier he's probably could ride this momentum to the finals. Do you still agree with that? Uh, yeah, certainly. I think when you win 4-1, very commanding victories. It just speaks volumes about your lineup. Yes, some things may have fallen your way fortuitously. It, it has to. It's a card game. But at the same time, preparation does matter how you choose to outfit your lineup. Not many people are playing this version of Hunter, for example, for BB Gun Gun. And in Conquest, very realistically speaking, it's not about the first three wins that you get. It's oftentimes the fourth because the fourth or fifth deck that you bring is always the hardest to bring. You have to decide between all the comp, all the, the, the okay decks. You have decks that are great. Anybody can tell you that Shaman's fantastic. I mean, some people might ban it, some people might not. Anybody can tell you that Drew is great. But when you start thinking about those fourth and fifth classes, that's when Frozen says, you know what? Maybe I'll bring Priest. And Muzzy's <laughs> in the background going, no. no. And all of us are like, oh, God, he actually did it. And, and then, then he does he it anyways. <laughs> May he rest in peace. Maybe we should invite Hot Meow to come play the guitar and sing a serenade for him. Sad McLaughlin, I will remember you. <laughs> in the background.
Uh, I'm sure someone's gonna now make a video of Frozen <laughs> losing with Priest as the <laughs> just a as the 1818 Cthulhu slow mo comes out to the board. Yeah, this guy's those who probably will steal that idea. Uh, please make it a black and white. Yeah, Chromas key. You're welcome to though. Don't worry. We do not claim to take one percent commission. <laughs> Over the five dollars he'll make from <laughs> YouTube views. Well, Baby Gun Gun off to a pretty good start here. Yeah, is able to best. get off a Cloak Huntress plus double trap. Uh, not that it's that big of a deal because Freezing Trap and Snake Trap are the two. And oh, there's a third one. Yes. The third one was was a Cat Trick. Uh, I believe it was Cat Trick. Noblord sequencing this correctly to make sure to pop the Snake Trap so that way he can get the full swipe on the board. However, he does give a lot of damage, and I don't think BB Gun Gun's that sad to... I mean, he is sad to lose the board, but at the same time, he can still pile in the damage because of this. He gets the cat trick, he gets two extra charges on the bow, and Noble once again stuck in a position where he might have to rely on an early Deathwing in order to stabilize or win the game. Is an early Deathwing even going to be enough? Because there's going to be a lot of damage coming out from BB Gun Gun. Now that he's sort of out of resources, he's going to be weaving in his hero power. He's got yes. Argent Squire plus hero power this turn, most likely. He could go for the minions because both of those minions are very resilient, and he knows that Noblord has to remove uh, this uh, cat in the hat for the next turn. Oh, I, I get it, dude. Cat in the hat. The Sometimes Blizzard's a little too clever for their own good. Noblord looking for something more than just what he has in his hand. You know, Wrath makes it so that way he hits the giant at eight this turn. Yeah, he could innervate out. Oh, no, wait, no, he, he can't. go down to nine, and then it would go down to eight, and he'd have seven mana available, so yeah. yeah. Okay, so he actually has to innervate the giant if he wants to get it out this turn, but I guess not. He might end up just wrathing and then playing the Deathwing next turn. Yeah, that, that trap could be either explosive or freezing trap. Yes. It also uh, could be a second cat trick. Uh, no, because he played it early on with the first cat trick. All three traps were up at the same time. Oh, you're right. You're so, right. I apologize. Uh, it could be an explosive trap. What? So that might sway his decision making. If he could eliminate that it was freezing trap, I don't know if he would just play Arcane Giant this turn because he knows he'd just be taking a free four damage because his Arcane Giant wouldn't even be able to contest the board. Also, if he uses Innervate, it means he can't oh, Innervate out no Deathwing one. as early as he might like. I mean, he's staring at at least... 10 damage over Whoa. the next two turns if you count bow plus Moonglade Portal is a pretty huge pickup. Being able to get a taunt minion would be massive. There's Sunwalker, there's Lord of the Arena, there's N Scaled Nightmare, which, I mean, in six turns will double uh, enough. Actually, five turns, excuse me. But it's just going to get frozen, and he basically... Rest in peace. <laughs> Penalized. <laughs> TJ was looking up synonyms for punished. <laughs> but he's a Nobbler's getting punished! He's effectively taking almost as much damage as the Moonglade Portal healed by not wrathing the 4 2 and by digging through his deck because he would have otherwise wrathed the, uh, the cat, which would, you know, take the 4 damage off the board. Yeah. Uh, so th he took 5 damage anyway, and now he's in such a tough spot. I don't even know how he comes back from nah, here. I, I think you're completely on the money here. Nobbler is pretty much just cornered. And once again, while we look at this Hunter deck and think, is it one of the weak links to the lineup? Absolutely not. BB Gun Gun putting on the pressure and getting the dream scenarios of setting up Cloaked Huntress with a lot of early game tempo and having the bow. Noblord pretty much just on a prayer to hope that this is not Freezing Trap. And that is not going to be that a some that's bad answered. news, Bears. And I think we have our first finalist. That's going to wrap up the series. BB Gun Gun is going to the finals for his chance to go to BlizzCon. Very well played. And, you know, his decks just feel like they're the best in both the matchups that he's played so far. Uh, it seems like he's been able to get an edge from, from the get-go. And uh, BB Gun Gun player, like we've mentioned, has been, you know, behind the scenes for a long time, helping a lot of players. Now gets his shot. DJ, BB Gun Gun versus New Ability in the finals. And... Like I said, man, these guys are really good, and I think they're slightly ahead of the others in terms of how they prepare their decks. But, I mean, at this point, they're just getting very marginal leads. There's, it's not something huge, like 5 10%. Yeah. It might be just 1%, but that might make the difference. We'll see if your prophecy comes true, if the ability is actually going to make it there. But let's go ahead and get some more thoughts on that series, as well as what's to come over at the sidebar. <laughs>